Thanks for tuning in to this edition of Business Daily. I'm Lee Ji-yoon in Seoul. Before we get started, let's first get a quick check of today's highlights. Ever since international sanctions were lifted from Iran, Korea has been working hard to restart business with the oil-rich nation. We tell you what progress has been made. Bonds and stocks are oddly headed in the same direction. Analysts are worried the recent bullish market is inching towards a bubble as a result of loose monetary policies. We sit down with an expert to talk about this. But first, President Bakune visited Pangyo Creative Economy Valley to check out our innovation drive at the start of campus. The president spoke of startup entrepreneurs, some of whom got to exhibit their products and services at the Mobile World Congress and seal export deals through one-on-one -on -one business consultations held on the sidelines of our state visits overseas. This all with the support of innovation centers such as the one in Pangyo. The president also sat down with a number of representatives from startup businesses at the event. And the nation's 17 innovation centers have so far supported over 1,000 startups and attracted $240 million U.S. million in investment. This is our fifth field visit in just a month, aimed at gauging the economic sentiment and hearing directly from the public. Bank of Korea Governor Lee Ji-yeol says that local banks need to keep an eye on their financial soundness amid the uncertainties in the global financial market. Speaking with the heads of major local banks in Seoul on Thursday, he said banks need to both monitor their assets and maintain an appropriate debt-to-equity ratio to cushion the current market volatility. He added there are concerns that banks could see their profitability decline due to the record low interest rate and the government's ongoing corporate restructuring drive. His comments come as market volatility has largely increased in the wake of Britain's decision to leave the European Union, as well as a possible shift expected in U.S. monetary policy. Meanwhile, back here at home, Korea's air traffic hit a record high in the first half of this year. According to the Transport Ministry, the number of flights crisscrossing the skies over Korea came to nearly 360,000 during the January to June period, up more than 8% from the same period a year ago. That translates into an average of almost 2,000 flights a day. The number of international flights using Korea's airports jumped almost 10% to 216,000. Domestic flights climbed nearly 5% to 119,000. In particular, over 11,500 China-bound flights passed through Korea's airspace in the first half, up almost 10% on-year. And from Korea's skies to the skies of Iran, direct flights to the one sanctioned Middle Eastern state have been expanded to 11 flights per week to allow for more business and tourism travel. And our Eunice Kim takes a look at the step-by-step -step progress made so far on restarting trade with Iran. It's been more than six months since international sanctions were lifted from Iran and about two and a half months since President Park Geun-hye made her landmark visit, said to have reaped projects worth more than $37 billion. As Seoul and Iran took steps last week to expand direct flights to 11 per week from the current four, progress to launch those projects and jumpstart their economic relations has been steady. Back in early May, the Export-Import Bank of Korea had signed a $15 billion financial package with Iran's central bank and finance ministry that also includes a credit line and loans of up to $6 billion. Exim Bank CEO Lee Do-kun characterized the move as stepping stones for Korean companies to join the Iranian government's state projects in a plethora of sectors, including health, infrastructure, water resources and petrochemicals. Exim Bank is now said to be in the concluding phase of drafting a basic agreement. Also in May, the Korea Trade Insurance Corporation had signed a comprehensive MOU with Iran's finance ministry, and a draft contract is currently under review. This, as Yonhap reports, Korea Gas Corporation is near setting up a branch office in Tehran to begin work on the $1.5 billion gas pipeline project connecting Iran and Oman. 
What remains to be solved, however, is the matter of currency and transactions. Iran prefers to do business in euros, as it has more trade with Europe, but to do so would require a green light from the U.S. Treasury Department. Talks have been underway, including when U.S. Treasury Secretary Jack Lew was in Seoul last month. Behind the determined efforts to lay the gritty groundwork is hope that by recapturing lost trade with the Middle East's second largest economy, Korea will be able to eventually find its way out of an export malaise. Eunice Kim, Business Daily. Gold prices have climbed roughly 28 percent since the beginning of the year, attracting many people who want to invest in the precious metal. And our Lee tells us more about the options available. One of Korea's largest retailers, Lotte Department Store, is having a gold sweepstakes worth $262,000. Offered to a total of 21 prize winners, the raffle has been attracting many people. Newspapers say gold prices have climbed a lot. I hope I win. I dreamt of a pig yesterday, so I thought it would be a good idea to apply. People's desire to invest in gold comes as prices have surpassed the 50,000 won per gram mark, or 42 U.S. dollars for the first time in the last week of June. A lot of people have been asking about the market price of gold because of Brexit. It's this upward trend that's been prompting Koreans to seek out various ways to invest in the yellow metal. First, there are gold bars. One of Korea's largest banks, KB Kungmin, said sales of its bullions have increased threefold to $1.6 million last month. On the day of Brexit, roughly $64,000 worth of gold bars were sold. But with investors having to pay value-added tax of 10 percent, as well as trading fees when buying and selling, experts say gold banking may be a better option to reap higher profits. Account holders can freely buy and sell gold as they would move cash in and out of their accounts, but unlike regular bank accounts, the balance is not protected in the event of a bank default and a 15.4 percent income tax is imposed on profits. Trading gold on the Korea exchange is another option, which allows investors to track prices in real time. Experts say although gold is considered a safe asset, given its volatile nature, investors may see a lower rate of return, especially if the value of the Korean won depreciates. Lee Ju-young, Business Daily. And along with gold, bond prices have been soaring, while stocks have also been trading at record highs. And investors are keeping a close eye on these trends as bonds and stocks usually move the opposite way. Let's find out what this is all about. Stocks and government bonds typically have an inverse relation. As stocks are considered riskier assets, while bonds are seen as being safer. But amid growing uncertainties surrounding Brexit, bond yields have been falling, even as stocks get a boost. The S&P 500 and Dow Jones Industrial Average have been closing at record highs, while the Nasdaq is also playing catch-up. All this while, the 10-year Treasury yield has been hitting historic lows. Economists say record low bond yields should be the result of low deficits and debt-to-GDP ratios, as well as strong economic growth and low central bank balance sheets. But that's not the case today, as they say that low yields all tie in with the manipulation of bond prices triggered by central banks. They add monetary easing has been distorting the bond market and creating a bubble in fixed income assets, sending prices soaring and making equities more attractive for investors seeking income. Raw material prices have also been on an upward trend. Gold has risen over 25 percent this year, hitting its highest since March 2014 at over 1,330 US dollars this month. Although it did hit a three-week low on this Thursday, as investors eye the European Central Bank meeting and its outcome. And to tell us more about this, we have Professor Kim Sehwan from Ihua Women's University joining us in the studio today. So good to see you, Professor. Pleasure to be here. So what exactly is going on with global stocks and bonds? I mean, can you tell us the recent trends? 
Well, uh, stocks and bonds market are booming together, which is unusual. Mm -hmm. We believe that the normal uh, relation between stocks and bonds are substitute, like the relation between Pepsi and Coke. When mm -hmm. we buy more uh, bonds, we buy less uh, stock. Mm -hmm. But uh, in these times, uh, there is sometimes a strong positive relation between uh, stocks and bonds. Uh, under two circumstances. Okay. The first is a uh, huge liquidity in the market, and the sec second is the long-lasting boom of the market. But we have a uh, boom of the uh, stocks and bonds market together because of the first reason. There is much liquidity in the market. Mm -hmm. Now let's look at raw material prices. Can mm -hmm. we see a rebound in prices as a sign of economic recovery? Well, not really this time. Okay. Uh, it is said that uh, the raw material pr uh, price precedes uh, real business cycle changes between boom and recession. But there is another boom in the real, uh, raw materials market. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, because of that, uh, crude oil price has been increased up to $45 per barrel, which is highest in, uh, in the last two years. Okay. But we know that uh, every country is experiencing serious recession, uh, including China, US, and Japan. So there should be less demand for uh, raw materials. Mm. So, so the, the price of the raw materials should be decreased. However, this time, international uh, financial speculators are much involved in the uh, materials market. So mm. that's why uh, raw material price has been increasing. Mm. So you're saying that this is not something that we should be too optimistic about. Then where is this bullish sentiment coming from? Well, uh, these are booms are all financial all about financial activities okay. and we do not eat stocks and bonds we eat goods and services so without producing more goods and services uh, these financial boom can be less uh, forever mm -hmm. so stocks and bonds are uh, related to these uh, financial uh, activities but that does not back up the long lasting uh, 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 economic recovery and mm -hmm. in addition uh, recently uh, international institutional investors like banks and hedge funds were not successful because of the uh, recession. So they have been searching over new investment opportunities. Mm -hmm. And after Brexit, they figured out that every central banks are decreasing interest rate. So mm -hmm. that's going to be a big momentum for the performance of the corporations. And mm -hmm. therefore, uh, more than four trillion uh, U.S. dollars has been inflowed to the stocks and bonds market together recently. Wow, that's a huge amount there. So if there are concerns about stocks and bonds being in a bubble, then I'm wondering what happens if that bubble bursts? Well, uh, to make a long story short, if mm -hmm. bubble really bursts, uh, there will be another round of the long-lasting recession. Okay. So as I pointed out, uh, without the support of the real sector, a financial boom never uh, lasts forever. So we know that a global economy is under recession. And the global, without the global economy's recovery, the financial recovery should be uh, goes away in the near future. Mm. And uh, people will figure it out in the near future when they try to sell the bonds and stocks, there will be no higher income to buy back their stocks and bonds. Right. So despite these risks, though, central banks still have no other option than to, I guess, push for inflationary policies. Right. Uh, we say there are two bad guys in the economy, okay. uh, recession and inflation. Mm. But, the, but the thing is, these two bad guys never appears on the stage at the same time. So we have been so much suffered from the recession after 2008. So this time they want to see the inflation, which is opposite situation of the recession. Okay. So that's why every central banks are pushing the inflation but very hard by providing more money to the economy. Mm. Now let's look at what kind of impact all of this is going to have on the Korean economy, and also what kind of monetary policies should Korea put forth from here and out? Well, after Brexit, every central banks are moving in the same direction, uh, decreasing interest rate and providing more money to the economy. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't look that Bank of Korea has much room of its own independent uh, monetary policy. So I believe that Bank of Korea will uh, keep the pace with other central banks by providing more money to the economy. All right. Thank you so much for coming in today, Professor. Thank you. And that wraps it up for today, but we'll be back tomorrow with more at the same time, same place for your business daily. So don't forget to tune in then. Thanks for watching and see you soon.